Hi folks, uh, Dick Coughlin here, and uh, this video is just a little bit of fun because I uh, I, I noticed recently on, uh, on you know, looking at my Facebook memories on this day that it's been it's been exactly three years since uh, one of the greatest moments in in the history of television when Ben Shapiro made his debut by uh, in, uh, on the BBC when he was interviewed by Andrew Neil. And it's uh, if you haven't seen it before, and I'm sure you probably have, it's a it's a fantastic. Uh, it's a fantastic moment and I just wanted to sit here and watch it again for the four millionth time um, and uh, it, it, it's truly fantastic you know if you've if you've you know you, we've all seen people lose debates but this is the first time you're ever going to watch a man lose an interview so I so let's just uh, so I think we should just carry on and, uh, and crack on and I will sit here and uh, and laugh along with you so here we go uh, ben Shapiro, you're followed by millions of people online and on social media. You're one of the biggest names in American conservatism. What is it you think you're tapping into? Well, I think that there, there are a couple of things. One, there is actually a hunger for different ideas. The, the monolithic nature of the United States media is pretty evident in terms of its politics. People tend to agree on essentially the liberal point of view and increasingly a, a radical leftist point of view in the media. And obviously, I speak... Yeah, the radical leftist point of view in the media, we know, which is uh, demonstrated, demonstrated by what? I mean, this is this is the these are the this is the nutters we're dealing with here. Is they look at the American media and think that this is you know quite clear, quite clearly that we're dealing with a radical leftist perspective. Now, imagine if you are someone who is a bit more radical as a leftist. Imagine how crazy you look. To these fuckers. Speak to in response to that. At the same time, uh, I try to provide an honest take on the issues of the day, and that means that I am not. I didn't notice this. he's got his little yamaka on. Oh, look at that! Isn't he that cute? Isn't he adorable? Beholden to the Republican Party, for example, uh, it means that I am going to speak out whenever I think that a principle is being violated, just no matter who is doing the violation. Yeah, it's not strictly true, though, is it? You know, because like you've you've defended Ann Coulter plenty of times, despite, despite the fact that she's, you know, not really said any. She's she's you know an outspoken cr critic of of uh, like Israel before, which you know you do pick and choose, you know, but you know. You have, well, you there, he has moments. You worked for the right-wing Breitbart website uh, that you left over its support for Donald Trump. And I think you said you'd never vote for Mr. Trump. Why is that? Well, in 2015, uh, 2016, the Breitbart made a, a hard turn in favor of one particular candidate, and that's their prerogative. Uh, to, to 2016, yes, that's when Breitbart made a hard turn. Wasn't it? That's when that's when Breitbart, Breitbart became very strictly partisan. Was in 2016. You fucking prat. Lots of publications have an editorial point of view, and Breitbart was one of those. The reason that I left Breitbart specifically was because it was because of an incident in which a Breitbart reporter, a female reporter, was grabbed on the arm by Corey Lewandowski, then the campaign manager for President Trump, uh, and was bruised on the arm, and then Corey Lewandowski proceeded to lie about it, and Breitbart proceeded to throw its own reporter under the bus, suggest that she was lying or making this up. And at that point, I determined that I could no longer work for a publication that wasn't even willing to stand up for its own reporters, and instead would throw those reporters under the bus in favor of a candidate that it sought to back. See, I'd, li I'd like to believe that that's true, and maybe it is, but then you also think, like, if you were thinking of leaving Breitbart anyway, this is a good way to spin it, but, you know, we'll give him, we'll give him that one, shall we? Haven't you lost your battle for the Republican Party, though? Isn't the Republican Party now the party of Trump? Right now, this is where this is where Ben starts to come a little bit unglued because Ben doesn't because Ben doesn't understand, you know, the way that journalism actually is supposed to work. Uh, you know, particularly on the BBC, the point is, you know, you know, you, you know, whatever, whoever that you're interviewing, you know, you're supposed to, you know, challenge and you know and you know offer, you know. Count, counterpoints or respond from the you know the other point of view to get them to justify and uh, and uh, and uh, explain their positions and ben doesn't understand that you know he he he, he doesn't he, he's never been in that world uh, and this is the point where he starts to come a little bit you know he, he realized you know, this is not going to be the easy ride he thought it was no i mean i think that the republican party is always the party of whomever is the president technically speaking but so that would be trump then which is what he just said yeah. In terms of who are the sort of the thought leaders inside the conservative movement, 
One of the, the thought leaders in the conservative movement. God almighty. Imagine. imagine. Are the people who are driving there are fucking, a lot of... There are fucking houseplants that could fucking make that claim if they had the... If they had the the ambition and the will to get up and fucking try the discussion inside the conservative movement, I don't think that's correct at all. I think that most Republicans see President Trump as a vehicle for their policy preferences, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they agree with all of his personal foibles or the way that he behaves or the things. But what's the difference, Ben, between someone who like you know doesn't agree with someone but is willing to, you know, you know willing to stand, stick by them, and someone who does agree with them? You know, eventually, you know, whatever, you know, whatever personal differences you have, it becomes irrelevant. That he says, and I think a lot of Republicans respond in anger to the media attacking President Trump mainly out of a, a reactionary and half appropriate upset that the media seem to have a double standard when it comes to covering certain politicians. I'm interested that you think there's a thought movement inside the Republican. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just love the way... I'm interested, you you think there's a thought movement? You're curious. ...party. I mean, haven't the Conservatives uh, run out of ideas in America? All the new policies, the Medicare for all... Just to give an idea of, like, of, of, like, of Andrew Neil, for those who don't know, Andrew Neil is the chairman of the Spectator magazine, which is a conservative weekly uh, magazine. Uh, he, he, you know, he was, he's a well-known Brexiteer. He was the leader of the conser he was the chairman of the Conservative Students Association. And he was the inventor of, you know, of, he was the guy who was the creator who, you know, he's since left and uh, denounced it of, uh, of, of GB News, you know, which was basically Fox News, the British version of Fox News minus uh, the viewers. You know, but so just to give you some context here about who Andrew Neil is. Fifteen dollar minimum wage, the Green New Deal, they're all coming from the left and they're popular. Well, Frank, fr I mean, frankly, I'm confused by the idea that any of those are, are particularly new ideas. I mean, most of those ideas have been around since Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Willie, the, really, the fifteen dollar minimum wage has been around since Frank Dor Frank Nor Roosevelt, since Roosevelt, is it? Right? The Green New Deal was around since Roosevelt, you know. And if they've never been implemented, aren't they still technically new ideas? Very earliest, or at the very latest, rather. Some of them go all the way back to Woodrow Wilson. But the idea that new ideas are absent in the Republican Party is obviously untrue. We have a, a very strong debate that goes on inside sort of the, the conservative halls of intelligentsia. It's not so much a hall, it's more of a shed. It's more of a fucking, it's more like a toilet cubicle. Uh, about what is the appropriate action to take with regard to the medical system. Should global warming be considered... Uh, a real threat, or should global warming be be considered something that technology will solve? And if I love it. Should, should, should it be considered a real threat, or should we do fuck all? That's the debate, is it? So, what are the best best aspects of, of solving that? Now, there's a, there's a rich intellectual debate on the right about nationalism versus patriotism. For as if those two are t a, a really any different. For example, or populism versus marketeerism. That debate is happening on the right to, to sort of suggest that. The right in America is bereft of ideas, but the left is full of ideas. Number one, not all ideas are good ideas. I mean, AOC is pretty good evidence of that. I'm, I'm a big fan of some old ideas myself that I think are, are pretty good. But beyond yeah, yeah, your hat would suggest on yeah. that, I think that it is it is intellectual uh, intellectual sneering of the highest order to suggest that only the left has has new and deep. I love Ben Shapiro like object complaining that anyone is guilty of intellectual sneering. I mean, look at it. He was born with a sneer on his face. There's, you know, there's an expression in this country, face like a bulldog chewing a wasp, right? And, that, you know, face like a fucking smacked ass. And that, you know, Ben Shapiro is the embodiment of that. Ideas. Some of the... You can tell he's getting... You can see the little... You know, he's getting pissed off now. He's not, he's not comfortable. Ideas that are popular in your side of politics... Uh would seem to take us back to the Dark Ages, Georgia, new abortion laws. Is that a little uh, smirk, little smirk sneer, he's not, you know, yeah. uh, Which you are much in favour of, uh, that uh, a woman who miscarries could get 30 years. A Georgian woman who travels to another state for an abortion procedure could get 10 years. These are extreme hard policies. Well, okay, a couple of things. One, I'm not sure, I mean, frankly, I don't know whether you're... Are you an objective journalist or are you an opinion journalist? I'm a journalist that asks questions. 
Okay, so you're, in a, you're a supposedly objective journalist calling policies with which you disagree barbaric and no, suggesting I'm... only one... <laughs> I'm a journalist who asks questions. Okay, okay, so 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 you're not an objective. All right. mm -hmm. ...side of the political aisle no. has ideas, so I just want to point no, out that... No, I know I that wish you're... You would, I wish you would at least be honest in your own bias. You could just answer... Or you could just answer the question, Ben. I mean, that, that could be the other thing. You could just defend your point, you know, as, as opposed to complaining about, you know, whether or not Andrew Neil actually... Genuinely agrees with you. So, so Shapiro, are, are, I know are you, that are you a member of the... in America is now so polarized that on one program you only have the left, and another one you just have the right. My job well, is to question those who have strong views and put an alternative to them. If you were an anti-abortion person, I would. Be... I, I'm well aware. No, you're clearly not, Ben. You clearly were not. You know, because all you've got to do is just answer his questions. It doesn't matter whether he was, you know, to the left. You know, putting pro-abortion questions to you, that you are... Really, would you, would you, would you call the pro-choice position? So, so, so why don't so you just answer my question? Sir, sir, I'm happy to answer your question. Sir, sir, sir. I, I, the, way that, the way that Americans do that, they say sir when they're being... I just, oh, God. sir, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Question? Please answer ahead. this one. Would you, suggest, would you suggest that a late-term abortion is brutal? I'm not taking a is view of this issue. To allow late -term abortion? questions. Sir, you just suggested the pro-life position is inherently brutal and terrible, so I mean... No, he didn't actually say that, Ben. He said that the idea of sending a woman to prison because she had she had a miscarriage, it, you know, specifically seems seems barbaric. He, you know, he didn't say the pro... You know, that's, you know, that's not necessarily what everyone who holds a pro-life position... Asking you, as an objective journalist, would you ask the same question to a pro-choice advocate by what, calling what their I'm, position brutal what and What I'm adorable? asking you is that why is it that a bill banning abortions after a woman has been pregnant for six weeks is not a return to the dark ages? What's your answer? My answer is something called science. Human life exists at conception. It ought to be protected. Now, back to my question to you. You purport to be... You're not interviewing him! Objective journalist. BBC purports to be an objective down-the-middle network. It obviously is not... It never... Because it's disagreeing with me, and if you're disagreeing with me and you're challenging me, then obviously you're not objective in any way. It has been, and you as a journalist are proceeding to call one side of the political aisle ignorant, barbaric, and sending us back to the dark ages. This is what they want. This is what they want. This is what they think. Why don't you just say that you're on the left? Uh... Is this so hard for you? Why can't you just be honest? <laughs> This is serious. Serious. That, no, that was what I, that, that noise there is what I like to call laughing in Tory. Yeah, it's a serious question. Mr. Shapiro, if you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. So let's move on. I um, love that look on his look, that little your... look on his face there where he goes like, you know, vote for exactly Mr. What you are, Trump. Sir. Would you vote for Mr. Trump in 2020? I'd certainly consider voting for Mr. Trump in 2020, just like I'd consider voting for anybody else in 2020. Uh, but didn't you once say that you'd never vote for him? I said that I wouldn't vote for him in 2016. And then I wrote a column for National Review explaining the conditions under which I might change my mind. You're a, a, a culture war warrior. Isn't he largely on your side? You, you wrote once it was unlikely he'd appoint conservative judges to the Supreme Court. He has. Right. That so you true. were wrong. And so I'm at, I, I like many of President Trump's policies, even if I still have serious reservations about his personality and character. Do you think there's a Democrat that could beat him in 2020? Sure, I think there are several Democrats who could beat him in 2020. Who would have the best chance? I think that Joe Biden is likeliest to beat him, considering that he has significant appeal in a lot of the Rust Belt. Okay, you got that one right. In places like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, the places that President Trump needs to win to retain the presidency. And Joe Biden also has a long history in politics, which means that the American people already have sort of a preconceived vision of him. President Trump as a campaigner is very good at dragging unknowns through the mud, uh, or at exposing details about people that are previously sort of covered up. But when it comes to Joe Biden, he's been well exposed for a very long time. Most people know him, and he's not nearly as unpopular even going in as Hillary Clinton was in 2016. So if it was a close race between Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump, you would, from what you say, I think, probably go for Mr. Trump. Yes, I would vote for Mr. Trump if it were a race between Biden and Trump, because I think that the damage that President Trump has done to the country on a character and rhetorical level has already been done and cannot be undone. I don't see it as getting worse day by day. That is the news. I mean, just to try and put your head around that. It's like, you know, the, the damage he, you know, he's caused has been done, has been done. It can't be undone. So I'm going to vote for the guy that's caused all the damage because the damage can't be undone. I mean, are you fucking mental? Status quo, unfortunately. Now the question becomes which policies I would most like to see enacted, 
and Trump's policy preferences are closer to my own than Joe Biden's are. Now, you're a star of new media, of conservative new media. Uh, you and others on the left and the right, you position yourselves as supposed tellers of hard truth. Now, you know, notice, notice, that, you know, notice he's forgotten about, you know, the objection to him, you know, Andrew Neil being left wing. He's forgotten that now because those questions were, you know, easier to answer. And, you know, and but now, but, you know, ne, ne, as soon as the questions become difficult, he then he then crumbles like a like a fucking flan in a cupboard. But haven't you all just really coarsened public discourse in America and exacerbated its divisions? You know, it's kind of odd to be to be hearing about me coarsening public discourse when you call policies you disagree with brutal and bring us back to the dark ages, sir. Uh, the point I don't want to return to, but the point was to put. Well, even if that was true, it doesn't mean you're not doing that. You know, particularly if you're claiming, you know, if you're claiming to do the opposite. You know, a position for you to reply to it, and I thought we that, covered yeah, that. that. That's. Well, well, I'll, I'll I put think some of the points too, because on your your, your videos, characterization of issues is part of the problem in the well, coarsening of public. Well, debate. maybe it's also part of your problem too, because we have from your YouTube videos, Ben Shapiro destroys the abortion argument. Ben Shapiro destroys trans transgenderism and abortion. Is that not a kind of coarse public discourse? Well, are those videos labeled by me? Well, well, why? Why don't you answer that? You know, the answer is obviously yes. They were uploaded, you know, labelled by you, because they're uploaded on your channel, and that to the point. Forget the YouTube videos. You had a whole book called "How to Destroy," you know, "How to Destroy," you know, left wing in in in, in debates and arguments. So you know, it's. It, you know, that's your whole fucking thing. You know, facts don't care about your feelings. It's a whole, that's your brand. You know, so, you know, the fact that you're asking the question and not saying yes, you know, the fact that you're asking him the question when he wouldn't know, you would. I have no idea. But why are you picking out, why are, why are you, why are you, I have a question. Why are you picking out random YouTube videos put up by people who are not me? Are you and attributing uh, the title? Right, and, and because Andrew Neal's now said that he doesn't know whether you know, he labelled them, he's now taking the position that they're random YouTube videos uploaded by him. They're not. They're videos on his YouTube channel. To me. Are you unhappy with the way they've been described? I think that people can describe me however they please. It's a free country. And that's, not, that's not what he said. You know, that's not, you know, you, you can still believe that and not be happy. I'm all in favor of a, public, of a public debate. If you watch the actual clips, they are generally civil conversations between me and somebody who disagrees with me. You say in your new book, uh, you suggest that America's largest struggle at the moment is, quote, the struggle for our national soul. We are so angry at each other right now. And I, I think that's true. I've just returned from the United States. But aren't you part of the problem with the way you go about your discourse, not the solution? I think we can all do better in our discourse, but the fact that I've reached out to so many people across the aisle to have conversations with them is pretty evident. The fact that I was willing to walk from a publication that was paying me money over principle is pretty evident. The fact that I've called out President Trump, a member of a party of which I am a member, repeatedly when I think that he has done things that are immoral, I think is decent evidence that I'm looking at least for a civil conversation. Well, as you're... Well, yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, this very interview undoes all of that, doesn't it, Ben? Say in your book, you say that there's quite a key phrase, we are so angry at each other right now. But as I say, aren't you part of that anger? Aren't you encouraging that anger? For example, you, des you described Mr. Obama's State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist mentality in action. Well, I think that if you, are want, if you want to argue with the characterization, then we can talk about what exactly his State of the Union address said. Is it charged language in politics? Sure. The problem that I have is not with charged language in politics, which I'm generally in favor of. I like a robust public debate and a very loud and, and, and spirited public debate. I have no problem with that whatsoever. You fucking do. What I'm talking about is the assumption that people with whom we disagree politically are inherently of bad character or, in your words, want to bring us back to the dark ages. That, that is literally the basis of a lot of your books is that, you know, is, is how, you know, your entire, your, your entire, your first book, which is nothing more than a mischaracterization of a, of any position. It's, you create these straw men and then, and then you have the, then you do your little, let's say this, let's say that, you know, it's, it's just utter horseshit. But again, it was your description of the State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist. 
the wording of, of President Trump's 2012 address. See, he's already fucking... See, this is where he's, you know, he's almost completely unhinged now at this point because he just said President Trump and he meant Obama. Yes, was bad and wrong. That's all. There are plenty of things that are bad and wrong, but it doesn't make them fascist. Well, I suppose that's true, but... Facts and logic destroyed by Ben Shapiro. You know... <laughs> If you would like to, again, if you'd like to read me the column out loud, I suppose I can critique it for you. You want, to, you want him to read out your column and critique, you want to critique your own fucking, you want to have an argument with, vicariously with yourself through Andrew Neil. Oh, well, again, with Mr. Obama, you said. I mean, what's, what is there to fucking, what is there to fucking read into, you know, into fascist? It's pretty cut and dry, isn't it? Jew, and you're, you're Jewish yourself. I only mention that because put this in context. The Jews who vote for Obama are, by and large, Jews in name only. Jainers, you call them. <laughs> Jainers. My statement was based on the fact that Jews in the United States, as an ethnic group, are largely irreligious, which is true by every single poll. Jews are the most irreligious group in the United States. As an Orthodox Jew who actually takes Judaism seriously, the point that I am making is that most Jews who are ethnically Jewish are not religiously Jewish in no. any context. No, no, no. The point you were making is that Jews who vote for Obama are Jews in name only. I said, I said, said that, yes, that is correct. That Jews yeah. who voted for Barack Obama, a progenitor of the Iran deal, a person who was cracking down on religious liberty, a person who spent much of his career as president of the United States attempting to deprive Israel of the necessities to defend itself. All of that is horseshit. That, that people, Jews who voted for President Obama, by and large, cared about Judaism far less than they did about other priorities. But it's not Obama, is it? Because Jew, Jews tend to vote for, uh, you know, Democrats, generally, by to, to a degree of about 60 to 70 percent. Did you say they should Correct. turn their badge in as a Jew? Uh, yes, I believe that if you are a, I believe that if you are somebody who takes Judaism seriously, that comes along with ideological, ideological... See, now, if a non-Jewish person said that, that would be anti-Semitic. And this is the way people like him, you know, they complain about anti-Semitism, but then he'll say something like that, which is his way of getting out of it, because you're just, you're not, you're not a real, you know, you're not a real Jew, you know. Commitment. I mean, I guess... It's... Also, I'm just, I mean, I, I, mean I, I hope you're having fun, by the way, going through every old tweet that I've ever sent to try and do gotcha questions, but if you'd like to have a discussion about my... Yeah, how dare you go through anything I've... How dare you, like, you know, look, at, look, look up things I've actually said publicly... And then use them against me. You fucking, you know, this is, you know, you, you fascist junta. A general philosophy or things I've done and say, I don't know, that's 2012, so it's now 2019. If you'd like to discuss something. Yes, because there's a statute of limitations of seven years on saying something, you know, on opinions, isn't there? One thing I've done and say, like, the past five years, why don't we do that? F oh, five years. Really? You want to go back? You want to, you want to do that? How about well, that? because your book is uh, a criticism of, uh, how angry America is and how America has to do better. And I'm simply I have an entire list out. on my website, sir. Sir, on my list. Sir, sir, excuse me, sir, sir, excuse me. I have an entire website of I'd dumb and bad things that I've said. I'm simply trying to point out some of the things you, you've said that seem to me to help to stoke that anger. For example, you said sure. Israelis like to... Sure, 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 yeah, I, uh, sure, 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. Build. Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Well, as I say in an article entitled, here's a list of all the giant, bad, dumb things I've ever said. Was that, that, was that includes, dumb? Well, yes, that's a dumb tweet. And not only, but it is also important to mention that the next few tweets clarify that that tweet is specifically referring to the... Com yeah, here's a tweet that's dumb, but it's worth pointing out that I, you know, clarified what I said and I, you know, stand by it. Mass leadership. Which, by the way, a BBC I've seen is relatively reticent to condemn. No, actually, it wasn't what you went on to do. And their say, job, they, uh, that, you are that's not their fucking job, you know. Correct, about the slur and our Arabs. It's not all Arabs that want to live in open sewage and blow things up. It's just Palestinians, you went on to say. No, it, no, it, and, it, and no, it says the said, ones who take sides and against Israel the Palestinian in the Israel-Palestinian conflict. population is rotten to the core, you went on to say. Not Hamas. The yeah, Palestinian I say by poll, uh, Arab population. I say that by poll numbers, they elected Hamas. They elected Hamas. They educate their children in school that Israel should be obliterated, sir. 
I guess if you want to read, you know, honestly, uh, th this is a giant waste of time in the sense that the entire interview is designed for you to shout slogans or old things that I've said. It sucks that, doesn't it, Ben? Hey, it's cr it's, it's, it doesn't, isn't that fucking bullshit? Yeah. At me. I don't see how this words the debate. You talk about you talk about undermining the public discourse. It seems to me that simply going through and finding lone things that sound bad out of context and then hitting them with and then hitting people with them. Is if, if you, you admitted it was dumb, dumb and stupid to say. So why? But now it's out of context. Way for you to make a quick buck on BBC off the fact that I'm popular and no one has ever heard of you. Oh, fucking hell. That was the moment you buried yourself there, my friend. No one can defend that. You can't defend that. Yeah, I, I'm popular and no one's ever heard of you. Why are you being interviewed by him then? What are you doing there? Uh, there are not many bucks to be made on the BBC. I'm like American broadcasting, Mr. Shapiro. <laughs> I get the point you're I'm trying paid, to make is... You're getting paid? Yeah, you're getting paid money to do this, aren't you? Yeah. Well, of course he fucking is. What's that got to do with anything? The, your words are highly designed to produce the consensus and understanding that the book seems to want to produce. Uh, that's my point, that you write about, you know, Judeo-Christian culture and so on, but so much of what you've said in the past would seem to turn its back on Judeo-Christian. He's just really, that was a big sigh there. He was really, he's, he's really pissed off now. Culture. You're lecturing me on Judeo-Christian culture after you call the pro-life position barbaric? <laughs> he can't let it go. He just, he just, he just doesn't get it. He just doesn't understand. I, I just really? asked you a question. And I asked you a question. You failed to answer a single one of mine. Frankly, I find this whole you thing... Like, you, you found out a single one of mine in this interview, of, you, know, w you know, which you are asking me... Cr you cr ...a waste of time. If you want to read the book and critique the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, you can think what... That's what you're on the show for! ...whatever you want of me. Why don't you frankly, just try and I don't answer care. the I don't, I don't frankly give a damn what you you're, think of me since I've never heard of you. You... And I've never heard of you until I briefed myself for this. But that's not the issue. You haven't. Then why the hell are you interviewing me? Sir? That, that's a good point, Ben. Why are you being interviewed by him? It's an interesting book, but my point is, your book claims that well, society. Well, it'd be nice if you quote it from time to time. Your book is well. Actually, I've done so several times, and I'm about to do so again. If you would let me just finish the question, your book well, frankly, claims that this, society you know what? Honestly, is turning honestly, its back sir? on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, this is what are those values? What, uh, considering that what. What are the values it's turning its back on? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. All sir. right. Thank well, so uh, thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political discourse. Now, Mr. Shapiro, we'll say goodbye. Oh, God. It's fucking beautiful. Anyway. Anyway, people. Anyway, I just wanted to, you know, share that with everyone again. Never let it die. Never let, never forget.